I guess. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, today might be kind of a light day. Um, my plan uh, is so uh, just announcements. Um, the I did return back to test one. Uh, in fact, um, uh, it was uh, it was uh, well. I mean, everybody did well. In fact, a lot better than I was thinking. Uh, the uh, the average time was only about like sixty or sixty five minutes. For people on it out of two hours, so it looks like nobody had any, any real problems. In fact, everybody, uh, everybody that had submitted something, pretty much they had uh, everything correct on it. Um, so I don't know. I, I, maybe I should add a little bit more on to, to that uh, if I do it. Uh, do the same kind of thing again in the future. Uh, that's by way of saying. So you should have that back. There is an example solution. Um, I had been planning on doing a review on that, but I don't, know, I don't think it's really that necessary. Um, <clears throat> I might just say a few things, I guess, on that, though, before I move on. Uh, I spend too much time on it. So uh, the example solution, I, I don't know if anybody really needs to uh, review over it, um, uh, but if you are interested, um, this is the one that was posted up there. Um, I guess you know the only thing was there were multiple versions of each of the questions, although um, for the last two, they were mostly just uh, variations of generating an artificial data set. So you mostly had to do pretty much the same thing, just on the particular data, uh, uh, artificial data set that you were generated given. So um, I did um, evaluate everybody on the, um, uh, the first question was mostly, I think almost everybody was using um, uh, Boolean indexing, pretty much, which is probably the quickest way to solve these. Like, uh, either you're asked to do this array min max, which um, basically is supposed to uh, set all the values that are outside of a particular range, uh, clip them to those values. So, um, um, I, I was going to say, so I did test, I did test everybody on the same uh, test that I gave for the functions, uh, plus one or two additional ones. If you're interested in the additional tests, I think those are in the example solution. So, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, everybody was passing the additional test as well. So pretty much everybody, uh, I think, you know, was correctly copying the data like I asked for um, and was doing uh, something usually similar to something like this in order to solve it. So, so what? There, there was either uh, this one where you had to clip things to the minimum and the maximum given or you might have gotten an average squash which was um, um, anything below uh, the average for the uh, uh, values, uh, all the values that you were given, um, you were supposed to uh, change to an NAN. So like for this first example one, the average ends up being something like uh, five, so, or, or I guess a little bit below five, so all the ones that were below five should end up being NAN. Um, um, And uh, if you had this third version of the question, you had to do, this might have been, because you had to do two separate, you had to find the, the smallest, the largest value in the array um, and modify the largest to just be 42 and the, the smallest would be negative 42. So, um, so for this example, uh, input, the smallest would have been one, the largest would have been 10. Um, those would have been the only two values that were modified. So. Um, Okay, so yeah, so don't don't think I have anything else to say on that. Uh, I think everybody mostly had all that uh, correct, and we're even working for the additional tests I had. So if you want to look at the additional test or anything, uh, you can look at in there. I don't. Uh, I was going through them a little bit quickly. I don't remember if anybody was using anything other than Boolean indexing. But uh, so if you were, if you weren't just uh, using um, 
creating like a Boolean mask and then using Boolean indexing, you can look at the example solution if you want to. So. Um, likewise, uh, so question two, you had to generate um, some data using one of these functions. So it's basically just a made up data set with a particular parameter set. So I've, um, Again, I don't think I had anybody was was uh, uh, doing anything particularly very wrong on these, just minor mistakes. Um, so everybody was getting the linear regression and logistic regression. Um, so, but yeah, besides the the, the different data set, uh, I asked to do the same thing for all of these. So to fit a regression, uh, and then you know stuff that you've done a lot. So. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, since people got this done really quickly and I didn't have anybody look like they were lost, um, um, well, this might have been a little bit easier than I was uh, meant it to be, but uh, that's fine. So I'm, I'm glad everybody has got these basics down anyway. So uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll go through these one by one. I, I, was, I was mostly just checking that um, uh, you did the one that question that you were given, and if you did the question you were given and just used a linear regression with no parameters, you should have gotten exactly the same fit that I show um, in the example solution here. Uh, same fit, the same root mean squared error and R, R squared score, and it's actually even the same figure. So, so yeah, I mean, given those parameters, you should get exactly that data uh, for your X and Y. Um, or whichever version of the question that you got. So. Um, and, um, you know, I did check that you did make a plot. I don't know if I, I wasn't paying a lot of attention, but uh, hopefully everybody was kind of plotting that by hand for the regression. So I was putting a regression line on there using, um, uh, using the coefficients that you got from the model. So... Uh, And um, uh, same comments for four. So for, for question three for the logistic regression. So uh, we were using, uh, I mean, you know, we have talked about these methods before, but um, we were using for question three either, or sorry, for question two, either the, um, uh, the make Friedman, uh, which will generate uh, a set of, data that's good for a regression, so basically just similar to some data with noise, um, and depending on these parameters, you'll get something that's either stronger or less strong of a correlation. So for one of these, you had kind of a medium uh, uh, strong fit for the data. One of these was, was really not really correlated at all, so it was really kind of a very low R squared score if you got this one. Um, um, and the other two were actually relatively strong uh, if you got uh, the version 3 or version 4 of that one. Uh, oh, and yeah, so we were using the make Friedman or the um, make regression. So the, the basic one, if you need to do some data like this for some testing or something, it's probably the make regression is what most people would use to make a set of, of made up regression data uh, with different properties. So. Um, likewise, as I started saying, so for question three, we we're either using the make classification, which is probably the basic one. So if you need to make up a set of classification data, you can use that method. Um, so for both of these, you know, kind of the parameters are things like we only use two features or one feature, uh, but you can make it uh, much higher dimensional if you want to um, and specify the number of samples. You can make it a multi-class classification problem uh, using this. So you can use three or more classes if you wanted to, um, and so on. So the things that mostly uh, make it either tougher or easier are going to be your class separation um, and uh, some of these other stuff here uh, that you had. So, so yeah, we were either using my classification or uh, make blobs. Uh, I can't remember. Um,
the purpose of the two, but both, both, both of them you can use to generate kind of a random classification data set. So. Um, so yeah, anyway, again, I, all I was checking on three mostly was that you were using the question that you were given and um, that, uh, again, you should have had exactly the same uh, model parameters uh, and accuracy that I show in this, and I think pretty much everybody did, except for maybe one person uh, on the third one did something that got a wrong model, even though they were using the right data set they were generating. So. Uh, okay. So yeah, any, let me know if there's any questions on that. Uh, like I said, I had originally been planning to maybe spend more time on that, but uh, I don't think we really need to spend uh, too much on that. Everybody was fine on the test. So. All right. So anyway, good job on that. Um, I don't know. Test two might be a little bit tougher. Than, our, our final test might be a little bit tougher than this one. So I'm trying to calibrate kind of. Uh, what I could probably be, I'll probably use the same kind of format, though, just as a heads up when we do our uh, second test at the end of the semester here. So give some questions on Miley online, but ask you to fill in a notebook um, and submit a notebook uh, with work. So. Okay. Um, so some more announcements or just looking ahead um, I'm still haven't completely gotten stuff caught up but I'll, as a reminder um, um, uh, oh uh, uh, I talked about this on Tuesday um, I haven't looked yet but uh, don't forget I am looking for something uh, by tomorrow uh, for the uh, the open-ended uh, data analytics project for the class so don't forget to do that. I, think, I don't, don't remember if, if, if all four of you are here on Tuesday. Uh, so I won't go over that again, but uh, do make certain you've accept the assignment and make certain that, that uh, try and, uh, you know, um, write up, um, uh, uh, indicate which data set you're planning on using and, and write me a paragraph or something. So what I'm asking for people to do by, by um by tomorrow, by Friday, is to accept the assignment um, and then uh, edit your README um, and specify here, edit your README and push back up your modified README uh, with the data set you're planning on using and, and, and write up a little bit about some things, your thoughts right now and what you might try to do. Um, uh, so what models you might fit and uh, whether whether you think it's a regression or a classification and that kind of stuff. So I'll begin checking those next week to make certain nobody's asking to do the same data set. So that's my main reason is why I want people to do that now is just uh, uh, so I can make certain that uh, if I get more than one person trying to, that, that's interested in the same data set from UCI or um, um, Kegel or whatever um, that I that uh, I point you that everybody's doing on a different data set. So I, I don't I don't want uh, anybody using the same data set here. So, and in general, um, um, I'll I'll mention this probably multiple times. You know, I'll keep discussing this as we move forward. But you know, I, I'm I, I really I, it'll be better if it's. The, there's lots of these data sets it, it, with examples of people have, have done an analysis with them and uh, have done work and stuff, you know. So, you know, if, if I see something that's just obviously not your own work, that, that's just 90%, 100% of, of an existing analysis that somebody's done, you know, that's going to be much worse than something that's obviously... Uh, a, an honest effort where you you didn't use anybody else's that you just try and do what you learned from this class to do some cleaning and uh, analysis and fit a model to it right so I'm, I'm not expecting 
you know, uh, real big complicated stuff here. Uh, I, I just want you to kind of show me, you know, what you can do, what you've learned, the basics, um, um, to take some data and see what you can do with it, right? So, so try and so, so a lot of these you can easily find on Kaggle or, or uh, just Googling other people have done stuff uh, with an analysis. So uh, resist the temptation to look at anybody else's like model they might have done, see what you can do, wait till you've actually pretty much completed it before you maybe go off and, and, uh, and look and compare how well you did with what maybe somebody else did if you're using a data set that a lot of people have used. So. All right, so just kind of, I don't know, heads up and kind of a fair warning. You know, I'm, I'm really more interested in uh, people uh, showing me doing your own stuff rather than just regurgitating some things that you might find uh, from other people that have done things. You know. Um, okay, so there's that, um, and um, um, as I started saying, um, I will be. I haven't gotten uh, a version of our next assignment four up yet. Um, I'll try and get that here, definitely before our next class meeting. Uh, but our next um, um, assignment is actually going to be on. Um, uh, support vector machines, which we're going to start talking about next week. So, so um, most of the next three or four weeks, uh, we're just going to spend the week uh, talking about uh, different uh, um, uh, different machine learning algorithms, um, starting with support vector machines uh, next week. So. But yeah, I plan on having one more assignment, uh, have an assignment on support vector machines. Then we'll have an uh, assignment on ensemble learning and decision trees. Um, and then there'll be like a sixth one on uh, using um, unsupervised learning. So like dimensionality reduction and unsupervised learning will be the focus of our sixth assignment. Okay. Um, and uh, for the rest of the time here, uh, in fact, this might not take us very long. Um, um, there were two uh, two things that I kind of pointed at you this week. They're a little bit kind of miscellaneous. Uh, we're not going to have um, uh, any of stuff on the assignment, although you might find making a K and N or a naive Bayes uh, model useful. As something to try for like your open-ended project. So, um, um, so yeah, I, I, yeah I, uh, uh, there is a notebook on Naive Bayes. I hope you guys you should go through it this week if you haven't done so already. So I was going to go through um, uh, this as well for the remainder of the time that we have here today. Just say a few things about using uh, Bayesian classifiers. Um, so. Um, this is mostly from this first tutorial here uh, that I'm going to look at uh, on this notebook here. So, um, let me just jump right to uh, talking about uh, the uh, 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 the conditional probability, the, the Bayesian uh, formula for Conditional probability. You, you. I mean, it's not unlikely that you might have run across this already uh, in some other uh, uh, coursework, um, and of course on statistics or other places. So, so this is useful uh, in lots of different contexts. Uh, Bayes formula. Um, so, you know, to break it down real quickly, um, uh, we can estimate the conditional probability of some hypothesis. So in our context here for machine learning for doing classification, um, uh, we're going to uh, use this to build a classifier uh, where we 
estimate the probability of let, let, let's let's just do binary classification. Uh, so the possibility that the probability of something being true given a set of data, right? So you, we can we can think of that in terms of conditional probability, um, and this is the, the normal notation that's used for that. Um, so this is the the probability of the hypothesis conditionally given some data or some observations that we have here, right? Where in this case, um, I'm most, I'll, I'll focus today on the hypothesis is going to be uh, true-false. or going to be a, a, a classic classification, binary classification here. So we want to estimate the probability of something being true given observations that we have, given data. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's not, you know, if, if you've never uh, read about how the, the derivation of Bayes' formula is not that complex, uh, but um, we can rewrite uh, a conditional probability um, like this. So the probability of hypothesis given data uh, is equal to the probability of, of data given a hypothesis times the, um, um, the prior probability of the hypothesis divided by the prior probability of the data. Um, and you might ask why to do that. Uh, the normal re reason why to do that is because uh, this is hard uh, to uh, estimate or calculate uh, normally, but uh, the, the reverse, the probability of data given the hypothesis, uh, we can often directly uh, make a table of or calculate uh, given some observations, right? So this is, this is the thing that we usually want to do, uh, but uh, these things on the right-hand side um, are often relatively easy to calculate or estimate uh, given a set of data, like, we'll, like we do here um, on this example, if you've worked through this example here. Um, So I don't think I'll go into the, the technical uh, terms too much on these. Um, so you might help hear people talk about these in terms of the prior probability um, and the posterior probabilities and things like that. So, uh, in fact, you know, just just looking at an example um, uh, is often uh, much more easier to understand than kind of going. Uh, going at it from the notation of these things. So, um, so anyway, this uh, I, I think I'll just jump right to this example. This example comes directly from that first uh, tutorial link that I had. That, um, I should probably find a better one because it's not really the greatest tutorial, but it does go over the basics of using uh, a Bayesian uh, classifier, or at least how it works internally. So um, this is very simple, right? So in this case, we're, we're going to be doing a, cla a binary classification here. So that's all the table of the data that we might normally have. This is what we would use for the training uh, uh, here, right? Where we have one feature, uh, where the, the feature is actually categorical in this case. It doesn't have to be for Bayesian, but uh, it makes more sense when you first learn about this to be thinking about categorical features. So I'll have to stick with the tutorial. So um, our, our one categorical feature, first of all, first off here is just um, um, uh, a categorization of the weather, whether it was sunny, uh, rainy, or overcast. So we've only got three actually here. Um, and then the, the thing that we're trying to predict or that we're trying to model here uh, is a binary uh, whether we played or not. So either True, we played on the day when it had that weather, or false, we didn't play. Um, or I guess I should say, use yes, no, like, like they did. So yes, we played, uh, so it's true that we played, or no, we didn't play um, on, on these particular days with the weather. Right? So th these are our um, observations that we want to build a model from here. One note about this, um, um, I just noticed going through today that um, the, the table uh, given in the um, 
tutorial that I'm using is wrong here. So uh, overcast is correct. So, you know, we can build a frequency table. So this is what is really being done behind the scenes if you use the scikit-learn uh, Bayesian um, um, uh, classifier uh, that it has. All right. So um, in order to calculate these, we can just build up a table, right? So this is what would happen if you fit the data, is you would get uh, a frequency table in this likelihood table um, that could be used then to make predictions for new data uh, using the Bayesian method. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so it's, it's easy to make these tables, right? So with this little amount of data, we can just find all the overcasts. There's four of them, and and every every time when the when the weather was overcast, we ended up playing. Right? So overcast days were good days to play, you know, play soccer or whatever, whatever it is that they're doing here on this example. Um, there is a, actually a mistake in the table. I just noticed today re reviewing this uh, tutorial. So um, you know, one of these sunny should be changed to a yes. So the way way we've got it right now, there's there are uh, one, two, three, four, five instances of sunny um, where uh, there were one, two, um, three no's. Um, and uh, just uh, two yeses. So I, I think, though, that um, probably uh, one of those uh, was meant to be a yes instead of a no. So I'm, I'm going to assume that the, the frequency table is actually correct here. Uh, we, we would get that if we just, like, for example, change the first uh, one to be that we played uh, when it was sunny uh, instead of when it wasn't. So assuming we make that change, we'd end up with uh, two no plays and three yes plays on sunny days. Um, and the rainy uh, is correct uh, looking at this data. So again, we had five rainies uh, where uh, on one, two, uh, three of the rainy days, we ended up uh, playing, or, uh, t sorry, one, two, Oh, um, okay. <laughs> so the rainy, uh, rainy's uh, incorrect as well. So rainy had uh, one yes, two yes, three yeses, and uh, and two noes. Hmm. Okay. So those, those are. Uh, both need to be corrected here, I guess. So um, I'm going I'm to just use the frequency table that we have here. Uh, so assume that we uh, had uh, three play days when it was sunny uh, and only two play days when it was rainy. And all four of the uh, days when it was overcast, we ended up playing uh, on this. So we'll just use these numbers. Um, So from these, you can do the, um, uh, the, the conditional probabilities, like the, the likelihoods here. Um, and then these numbers can then directly be used uh, to plug in to the Bayesian formula if we want to ask a question. So uh, real s simply, these are like the these are joint probability tables. Um, uh, if you've done some statistics course where you talk about like a, a joint probability table. Um, so we can break it down on whether, um, uh, based on our label here, on our binary label. Um, uh, and, and again, we're just counting these out, right? So, um, uh, well, uh, okay, yeah, I mean, this is just the same table uh, as we had here, but from here, though, we can calculate um, the, um, um, you know, so we have 14 total uh, samples or observations in our data set here. So, you know, 4 out of 14 times um, it was overcast, 5 out of 14 it was sunny, 5 out of 14 it was rainy. Right? So that's just the, uh, the uh, um, the, the rows here for our likelihood table. Or for the columns, um, 
um, you know, we can see these will these will give the the prior probabilities of play or not play, for example. Um, and these will give the prior probabilities of the, of the weather, whether it's overcast, sunny, or rainy, um, that we have here. So anyway, um, um, given if we're using these, we had five times where we didn't play, no, and we had uh, nine times where we did play, yes. So these would be kind of like our prior probabilities for play or no play, and these would be the prior probabilities for overcast, sunny, or rainy. Um, or we need these as well, right? So um, um, these are condition of the you know the, the condition that we played uh, that we didn't play, given it was overcast. Um, so zero of five times uh, we didn't play with overcast and uh, uh, four out of uh, the, the, the nine times um, so is that right? Yeah. So uh, da, 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 da. Um, So yeah, I mean, right, these are just concentrating on when we didn't play. Um, so there's five times we didn't play, um, and zero of those five times it was overcast, and two of the five it was sunny, and three of the five it was raining, and so on, right? And, and then this is just concentrating on when we did play, so there's nine times we did play, and so these give us the, um, I guess, the posterior probability uh, for those. Uh, So anyway, um, um, again, you know, the notation um, um, is relatively simple uh, once you get down to actually doing it, right? So if and if you fit a Bayesian model, basically it would it would take your input samples and it would um, um, just uh, generate uh, frequency and likelihood tables like this. So, so that would constitute the model for a Bayesian classifier using so I can't learn. So um, if we want to then do the prediction, you know, the probability, uh, in this case we've only got one feature, so our only observation is um, um, what the weather type is, overcast, rainy, or sunny. All right. So we can ask what the probability is that we'd play given it's overcast and what the probability um, um, is that we wouldn't play, no, given it was overcast. Okay. Um, so plugging in <clears throat> Bayes' formula, um, we can rewrite the, the thing that we actually want by, by finding out um, these um, prior probabilities and um, our uh, uh, posterior here. So um, probability is overcast given yes, um, um, comes right from there. Uh, the, the uh, 0.44 uh, and then you know our probability of yes um, is going to be this one here the 0.64 um, and the probability of overcast we're going to read out from here that would be the, the 0.29 right? <coughs> so anyway I mean you know this is basically giving us an estimate of, um, of uh, from our, the observations that we have, um, um, uh, we're going to give a condition, conditional probability of our estimate that we would play, given it's overcast to 0.97. Uh, just plugging these in. Um, and you can do sa the same thing for no, right? So notice these don't, ha these don't add up to one here. Um, so these are giving... But, but uh, these are basically, uh, if we were to fit a model um, in something like Scikit-Learn, if we we're doing this by hand, you know, the fitting of the model, would, we would basically build up tables like this, given our samples as inputs. Uh, and then, but if, if we're going to 
make predictions on new ones, we would do something like this, right? So given uh, that a new, uh, that, that, that today is overcast, <coughs> uh, we would plug in uh, and calculate our conditional probabilities for uh, the yes or the no, given the new observation, um, and uh, from those, we would do the normal thing. So if we had to make an actual prediction, we would probably take the one that was the highest, uh, and that would be the one that, so, so we would say that, yes, we're going to play, or predict that we would play um, if it's overcast on this uh, day here. Um, So, I mean, th this is about the, the simplest that you can do because we only have one feature and we're doing binary classification. So, um, um, uh, if you read through that tutorial I gave you, um, so it has a couple of other examples. I'm only, I'm only looking at the, uh, the, the example where we do this weather one uh, and, and whether we play or don't uh, in this notebook, but it had a couple of other data sets uh, if you want some more examples. But, you know, if we have two features, uh, same kind of idea. Um, um, uh, so here we're using the weather that we had before, but also uh, a categorical categorization of the temperature. So either hot, uh, mild, um, or cool. Here, right? So we split it up into three things. So again, I don't think I'll go into it today. You don't have to uh, use all of your features as categories as might be implied here to do Bayesian. You, you can have, um, um, you know, just a, 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 a real valued number um, um, as well. Um, uh, it'll still work. But um, here every, everything is a categorical variable that we're using. So, um, So, for example, uh, kind of as the last one that I'll walk through here in some detail, um, our observations then at that point, if we want to make new predictions, we would have two features. Um, so, like, if, if uh, we want to make um, a prediction on this model, given that uh, the weather was overcast and the temperature was mild, um, we can rewrite uh, um, using Bayesian's basis formula, so, so it comes like that, and then we just have to uh, calculate or look up from our fitted model um, the, um, uh, our three different things, right? this conditional probability and then the, uh, the priors for the prior for yes and the prior for you know, how often we have weather, overcast weather and mild temperatures. So again, yeah, this table isn't too big. You could build the, the same tables, but um, 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 uh, we kind of step through each one of these. So this should make sense. So for example, uh, what? Um, So I'll just look at one of these, but but you know, uh, basically to, to estimate that probability, you just have to find how many times we uh, we had that in our table, right? So how many times we had the combination of overcast and mild. Right? So looking through here, um, that only happens one time of the 14, right? So so this prior probability is 1 14th uh, that we have overcast and mild. Now you should be able to do the same thing to figure out this one and this one. Um, anyway, so if you plug those in, uh, what here? Uh, uh, so we can estimate our uh, conditional probability that we would play given that new observation, uh, which um, should be this one here, I believe. Is that right?
So uh, anyway, yeah. Um, hopefully that that's right there. So uh, we do the same thing that we did before, um, and, and we can calculate the uh, uh, conditional probability, given that observation for yes and for no, um, and then we would use those if we have to make a final hard decision. Uh, usually, whichever was the maximum or the the highest one, uh, we'd make a decision there. So. Um, Okay, and just as kind of an example of, of doing this actually with scikit-learn, uh, I'm not, well, so, you know, uh, all of our data was categorical data uh, in this uh, example, so we can just recreate the, the second version of that where we had uh, two different features, each with 14 observations. So we've got, what, three categories of weather, sunny, overcast, and rainy, and we've got three, three levels of temperature, hot, mild, cold, um, and we have a binary classification. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, to do this, uh, we do need to uh, encode those. Uh, so, in scikit-learn, scikit-learn uh, wouldn't be able to take uh, strings as inputs. So, um, um, here we're just using a regular um, uh, label encoding, so we'll get an integer value, zero, one, or two, for each one of the levels for the weather. Um, uh, same thing for the temperature, and uh, same thing for the, um, um, uh, our labels, uh, whether we play or not here. We need to encode everything, since everything is categorical here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, given that, then you know. Um, so the the what the the um, uh, second learn uh, calls these a, a Gaussian uh, naive Bayes. Um, the it's Gaussian because I'm not certain. bring up the help here for this real quickly. So, um, Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, can't remember why, what the Gaussian is in this case, but, but, but uh, this should be doing something pretty much like we were just showing here. So, um, and, and, and um, should be no surprises here on um, the, uh, um, on the interface, right? So, uh, as long as we, uh, this, this is by default, is going to be doing, a, making a classifier for us. Um, um, and so we can fit our uh, data uh, in order to generate those uh, frequency tables. Uh, you know, so that that's basically constitutes the model for a naive Bayes uh, predictor like this. Um, and um, So notice here, um, uh, we're showing an example of, of predict probability. So these hopefully should be the same as the example that we had above here. So here, uh, we're asking it to give us the raw probabilities that the Gaussian model does uh, where uh, when our features are 0, 2. So that should correspond to the, um, uh, so 0 should have gotten mapped to the overcast uh, for the weather one. and uh, two should have gotten mapped to um, 
um, to, to mild. Right? So that, that was the, the same example that we were doing uh, here. O weather overcast and temperature mild. Um, so hopefully these numbers end up getting the same. But uh, this is what it's, it's telling us here. So right. So the first one should be the uh, conditional probability that comes out uh, for uh, no play, and then the second one would be the conditional probability that comes out for yes play. So effectively one for the other one. If, if, if you ask it to make a final prediction, uh, of course it should predict uh, the higher one for categories. So, um, So that should correspond to the uh, yeah to, to the yes play or the one the true category there. So, um, all right. So what else? Uh, da, 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 um, I mean, you can use uh, the. I don't, I don't know if Bay, Bayes isn't a very good, um, um, it's not a good, it doesn't, uh, I don't think it has a version that you can use for regression. So uh, it's one of those kinds of models that um, is really uh, going to be, you're going to have to use it for classification kinds of tasks. Um, I'm right on that. But you can use it for multi-class classification, so it doesn't have to be binary classification. Um, and you can use it for, um, uh, if the features are not categorical as well, although I don't know what it does by default uh, for that. But, but like the line data set, I don't think we've talked about that one before, but um, um, if we take a look at it real quickly. Uh, uh, I mean, these aren't categorical, so it has... Um, Uh, 178 samples uh, with 13 different features, and the features are mostly uh, like look like real valued numbers. So these have to do with uh, measurements of, um, of different aspects of wine here, uh, acidity, and I uh, can't remember all the other uh, kinds of stuff there. Right? Um, uh, oh, there's the feature name. So. Um, alcohol content and um, some other stuff like that which can affect wine quality here um, where uh, so there was uh, three different categories of, of wine here I guess um, so probably you know like good medium and bad or something like that so. Uh, so, um, I mean, you know, the, the kind of the, the final point on that is, you know, we didn't have to do anything special, uh, you know, for these features. So even though the features are non-categorical, uh, it does do something by default, uh, even though kind of the, the basic of Bayes, um, would probably probably does have to discretize those somehow. Um, I'm, have to, I'm not certain exactly what it does uh, for those. I have to, to go back and do a little bit of research on that. So, uh, but um, as long as the output is categorical, there shouldn't be any problem. So, like in this case, we're fitting. Um, um, uh, we're fitting our wine model here. Uh, 
using all of the features that we had on the, the wine data set. So, uh, and, and not um, first uh, putting them into categories. Um, okay, so yeah, I think that's like I said, that, um, uh, again, kind of early today, I didn't, didn't hold, have a whole lot. This, this week was a little bit of uh, miscellaneous, kind of a, a catch-all, uh, but I did want to maybe show um, some different bottles. So both of these, just to summarize real quickly on that uh, before I wrap up here, uh, so the Canon. Uh, and the Naive Bays, uh, the way that they fit models um, is uh, quite a bit, well, is, is, is different than uh, logistic regression and um, support vector machines and some other stuff. Right? So especially uh, uh, the, the K, uh, K nearest neighbors that we talked about on Tuesday, um, it doesn't really, you know, you don't really fit a model at all. It's, it's, it's really just calculating uh, the distance uh, and, and finding the closest neighbors when you want to do the predictions, right? Uh, for for uh, for Bayes, um, there is something that when you do the fit, it does do something. Um, so basically, the way I think of it is, you know, it, it is going to be creating uh, these like frequency and likelihood tables. So based on your samples, it will create those just to make it so that you can more quickly uh, whenever you need to do a prediction, uh, pull out what you need in order to uh, use Bayes' formula to um, 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 give you your conditional probability, right? So, um, but, but yeah, that's, that's quite a bit different from what we'll be seeing. When we go back next week to talking about support vector machines, you'll see that we'll, we're going to be back to um, doing um, uh, the idea where we have coefficients for each feature, right? So in this case, again, even for the bays, uh, we really don't have coefficients for each feature. We have kind of a different idea. So uh, we have prior probabilities for the labels and uh, these prior probabilities for each feature. Uh, but um, um, yeah. All right, uh, but yeah, it's good to be familiar with those. Um, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, so I'll repeat a few things for one or two people that came in, just announcements. Um, so uh, yeah, the tests uh, are back. Uh, so you should go ahead and, and uh, uh, maybe review the um, uh, example solution I had. If you had any questions on that, uh, there's an example solution posted. Also, don't forget about the um, um, I am looking for something by tomorrow, uh, except the assignment, the, the, the final project um, uh, assignment by tomorrow, um, and try and look through and pick a, a data set to use and uh, indicate to me sometime by tomorrow or uh, certainly by before next week uh, which data set you're thinking of using so I can start seeing if I need to, uh, if, if, if more than one people want to use the same one. Uh, and get people pointed to using everybody using uh, a different data set on that. So. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll let you guys go. That's it for today. Um, so we'll get started with support vector machines next week, and we'll get started on the fourth assignment uh, next week as well. All right. Yep.